Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here. Welcome to episode 57 of our Rotary Craft tutorial series. I know, it's been a while, hasn't it? Um, anyway, in this episode, we're going to talk about a block that I've actually never used until recently. And we never did, we never did a video about it. It's the uh, Ground Penetrating Radar, also known as the GPR for short. Um, so let's take a look at how to make this, and we'll take a look at how to use it. Because once you know how to use it, it's actually quite useful. So if we look at this work table, the uh, recipe here is four HSLA steel ingots, one in each corner, two base panels, a radar unit, circuit board, and a screen. Of course, the radar unit crafted like so. The circuit board crafted in a number of different ways, and the screen crafted like so. So, the ground penetrating radar uh, looks like this. It's got kind of a little, looks like a, a map on it. And uh, we're going to come over here because I have one set up. And we've given it industrial coils so we can set the power. Now, uh, without any power, uh, if you look at the ground penetrating radar's GUI, uh, you may wonder what the heck's going on. And if we give it some power, you can see it has its minimum amount of power that it requires is 32,768 watts. It doesn't have any torque or speed requirements, just the power requirements. Now, I've tried to solve this equation right here, but I was never good at logarithms, and so I, I can't figure it out. So I'm just gonna give this thing, uh, we're gonna give it more power, because right now we're giving it 32,768. If I jump this up to two uh, newton meters, we double the power. Now all of a sudden, we have a much larger picture. And if I give it like four newton meters and give it more power, it's not really working that way. But we've got a lot, much larger picture now, so let's take a look at what this is. Uh, what this is. So the ground penetrating radar. I just want to stand like this. The ground penetrating radar shows you a cross section of the uh, ground that is underneath it. Um, so do you remember when before we turned this uh, power up? If I turn this back down to one, and give it the minimum amount of power. It's only showing us one line right down the center. Well, this is the line of blocks directly underneath the, the radar block. It's showing you what the blocks are all the way down to bedrock. And then when you give it more power, in this case we give it that, it widens the field of view to the left and to the right. So this is currently showing us uh, a number of blocks um, to the left of center and to the right of center, the center which is the actual radar itself. You can see, if you look here where there's grass to the left and grass to the right and there's one little bit of dirt, that's where the radar is because because the radar block is there, it turned that to dirt. Um, now, uh, you may, so basically what this, is, what this is, it's letting you see what blocks are underneath us and all the blocks are color coded. I don't know all of the color codes. I know that this gray color that makes up most of it, that's stone. Um, the blue color is, uh, is water. Um, anything that is a sort of purpley pinkish color, that's just something that the radar doesn't know what it is. It's a, a mod block, um, it's, it's some kind of block that the radar doesn't know what it is, but there's a block there. So that's what all the pink is. Um, so right here you can see, uh, for instance, just to the left of our radar, where this grass is on top, you can see there's a void here, there's a hole there, and uh, you would probably not have known that there was a hole there without using the radar, but if we break these blocks, we can see that there is, in fact, a hole there. Now, already this is useful because we can see um, the various uh, things. We know there's like a, a cave sort of a tunnel over here. Um, I think this down here is redstone. Maybe this right here could be diamond. It looks like a decent color for it. Maybe this bl blue here is uh, lapis. I don't actually know. Um, but it, it'll, it shows you and you can you can look without mining uh, what's underneath you, but it gets uh, better um, because you can use the square brackets on your keyboard, um, which are which are generally um, uh, just below the backspace key to the left. So the square brackets left and right will shift the perspective of the radar forward and backwards. And the radar does it does matter which way you're facing when you place it. So for instance, this radar, I was looking in this direction uh, when I placed it, which is why it's showing me the cross section uh, to the left and to the right. If I press the square bracket to the right, the right square bracket, the one on the right, uh, it shifts the view forward, away from me one block. And now I can see all the blocks that are underground, uh, that one block 
uh, forward uh, for me. So we can see there's like a skull shaped thing here. There's some of this bright green stuff, which might be uranium or something. I don't know. Um, but you can keep hitting this button. I almost think you can hit this button indefinitely because I've not actually seen a limit to it except for the fact that uh, if you um, push it forward to uh, a, an unloaded chunk, uh, the whole thing will appear gray. Um, so if that happens, you know you've gone far enough to where you've hit an unloaded chunk. Um, but you can go forward and backwards in both directions. If I uh, use the left square bracket to come back, uh, we can see uh, now I'm looking at the blocks that are behind me uh, underground, which is pretty darn cool. It's, it's pretty neat. There are a few limitations with using the, uh, the ground penetrating radar, mostly on the Y level that you're standing at when you place it. So according to Reka, you can't be above Y level, I think he said 92, and place this down, because there's only so much room uh, in the GPR. So if you notice, it ends right here. Well, if I was higher up when I placed this, it would push this bedrock layer down to the bottom and sh uh, so that it could show me more of it. Um, it only shows you the blocks that are underneath the GPR. So make sure you're below Y level 92 um, when you place this, but it, and if you are, you can see all the way down to bedrock. So obviously this will help you finding ores. Um, you can sort of scan the area to, to see if, if there's stuff there. And uh, if you, like for instance here, if you wanted redstone, well, by looking at this screen, you now know that there's redstone um, over to the right of, of the GPR and straight down. So that would be very useful. Um, however, I was uh, looking for something very specific I was looking for a Chromatocraft, Chromatocraft Barrow, uh, which is a, 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 a world gen feature uh, in Chromatocraft. And uh, what I discovered was I found one. So right here you can see there's a uh, black void, so there's an empty space, uh, surrounded by these peak blocks. And if I go far enough um, forward, it sort of it ends again, right? So Rake had told me that that's probably what uh, it would look like. And see, there's actually an opening right here um, because there, there's always an opening to these things. So what I did was I went and burrowed down. So if we head over here, not to that hole, this is the hole. It's about five blocks or three, four blocks ahead of the uh, where the GPR is. And uh, if we come down here, we can see that indeed there is a shielding cloak blocks. And there is, in fact, a Chromatocraft Barrow here. Now, I've already been in here and I've already broken the controller. But, uh, yeah, this is just one one, one uh, very good use for it. If you're looking for uh, unique world gen features, like the Chromatocraft Barrows, you could use the ground penetrating radar to um, survey the area. You could do the same uh, if you're looking for the um, meteors from uh, Applied Energistics, because uh, you can use the, the compass from that mod to find the chunk that it's in, but not necessarily where in the chunk it is. Well, just take your ground penetrating radar, set it up in the chunk, and uh, you'll be able to find it. You'll have It'll probably show up as pink, but uh, you'll know where it is. Now, certain things have been given color codes, um, certain ores, but and there are also a few mod things that have been given color codes, like this big white space here uh, is crude oil. Um, so there are a couple things that Reka has... Uh, given color codes that are from mods. But generally speaking, uh, if, if you don't know what color it is and you know it's from a mod, um, chances are it's probably gonna show up as some of this purple stuff. You can see this orange color right here. This is lava, there's a lava pocket down there. Pretty sure that this bright teal stuff is diamonds. And uh, so yeah, the ground penetrating radar, quite useful for surveying the ground beneath your feet. Um, this isn't as wide as it gets, but because I don't know the actual, um, amount of power you, that, that it takes for maximum. You give it enough power and it'll push the view all the way to the left and to the right. And you'll get a full field of view, um, which is nice. But you need to at least give it, you need to at least give it third, uh, uh, this much. So 65 kilowatts, you'll at least need to give it 65 kilowatts in order to get a decent picture. Uh, at the minimum power, it's just one sliver, which ain't very useful. But yeah, the ground penetrating radar is quite useful. Just remember that it's taking a vertical slice. So if I was to take all the blocks to the left and to the right of this, uh, all the way down to bedrock, and pull it out of the ground and look at it from the side, that's the view that you're getting. So don't be too intimidated by the uh, by the radar's GUI. That's basically all it is. It's showing you a side view of all the blocks that are underneath it. 
So quite useful, uh, especially if you're looking for a specific ore or a specific uh, world gen feature such as a Chromatocraft Barrow. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. There'll be more episodes to come. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the Cave Scanner next, which you can use in conjunction with this for some good effects. Now, uh, uh, before we sign out, um, I am now running my audio, my voice audio, through a, a couple of extra filters to try and improve the sound. So I'll be doing that for this video. So let me know in the comments how you like it. Uh, anyway, I'm Setnil H, and I'm signing out.